Hi everyone and welcome to a new Howes webinar. I'm Amanda Pollard and I'm Senior Content Editor here at Howes. As trade shows return in person, we look at some of the biggest trends coming out of European design this autumn. Our roundup of key trends from the Autumn European Fair schedule starts with possibly the biggest and for many most exciting of them all, the return of physical, in-person fairs. Many of Europe's iconic trade events were held in person for the first time in 18 months and the excitement among professionals and design enthusiasts was palpable. In today's webinar we'll cover the following topics, sustainability, textures and forms and colours. Of course, the seismic shocks of the pandemic continued to be felt and so the fairs were a little different this year. The Salon del Mobile organisers, for example, took hygiene measures as a creative opportunity. At this event, all exhibitors were given a standard display space which helped move traffic along, while it also levelled the playing field. Major brands and small studios had to work equally hard to set themselves apart from the crowd. And to mark this new beginning, the fair was renamed Super Salon. So the key trends at this year's European fairs were driven by our recent experiences. On one hand, a hyper-awareness of the environmental crisis, and on the other, a renewed delight in the comforts of home. Sustainability was the strongest theme to emerge from the fairs. While greenwashing, or being eco-friendly for sake of publicity, is always a potential criticism of sustainability within brands, we loved how designers looked at the topic from so many different angles. There were products made out of recycled or recyclable materials. Pictured here is the prototype for the ocean chair by Zweaver, exhibited at Maison et Objet. The chair is made of recycled ocean plastic on a 100% recyclable metal frame. A number of recycled and otherwise more sustainable materials were also debuted at Super Salon. And according to the organisers, the fair itself is sustainable, with the show stands made of 100% recycled wood, which will, will be returned to the production cycle to prevent the emission of over half a tonne of CO2. And circularity, still a red, radical idea a few years ago, uh, saw the fairs all over Europe engaging with the concept of circular design this year. At the London Design Festival in September, Circularity was the focus of a panel discussion, and at the event's Designing for Circularity exhibit, 12 Danish furniture designers showcased approaches to keeping materials in use. And at three days of design in September in Denmark, Bang & Olufsen displayed an item that upgraded 1970s turntables, and likewise, furniture manufacturer Skager Skagerak has continued its re-classic initiative in which it buys back, restores and resells its products. The firm's CEO, Jasper Panduro, told us that demand for these pre-loved items had increased during the pandemic. Unsurprisingly, vintage and antique items were popular at this year's Three Days of Design, with a focus on how a new generation of consumers are approaching antiques and auctions through a sustainable lens. The chief exec of da Danish auction house Loritz.com told us that people have usually bought things at auctions because of the aesthetics, the history or the high quality of the aged objects, but now we're seeing a whole new generation of customers for whom sustainability is the primary reason for bidding at auctions. Craftsmanship was also highlighted for its eco-credentials as it represents small scale production as well as local traceable manufacturing and supply chains. This trend was reflected in unique skillfully made products that move far from the mainstream, such as this beautiful vase by Audrey Jezik Ceramics in Chamot Stoneware, which you can see here on the left. And at Maison, there was a re resurgence of needlework and macrame. Also, new delicate ways of working with wood are seen in this sculpture on the right by Maxime Perron. And in products, particularly by younger designers, that reference the visual arts, trend forecaster Elizabeth Lariche who curated one of the themed areas at Maison et Objet, noted how designers reference 20th century visual art approaches like splatter, drip techniques and freeforms. And at Decorex, traditional crafts were used in new ways, 
Anika Reed, for example, exhibited wallpapers made with traditional woodblock painting. At Three Days of Design, craft was also part of a broader movement to revalue the rituals of home, particularly meals. Several dinnerware collections emphasised the meal as a setting for bringing people together. And at Maison et Objet, there was a focus on the pleasures of being home. One feels at home. The theme to be at home, already energised before the pandemic, resonates fully with our lives, Elizabeth Lariche told us. And at London Design Festival and Decorex, this trend was reflected in soft, curved and extra comfortable furniture, as you can see on the screen. Biophilia has been a big part of well-being in the home and the trend is still going strong. At Circe, it was seen in botanical patterns on tiles. Decorex was likewise full of nature-inspired and organic designs, including a new line of wallpapers and fabrics from Timorous Beasties. And at Super Salon, plants were integrated into furniture, including in Stefano Burri Architetti's monoblock kitchen for Aran Cucin. Biophilia was also part of the fair structure, with 200 trees planted around the venue, and after the event, the trees will be planted in the Milan's North Park as part of an urban greening project. And what is certain is that colour is back in a big way. This year's focus on colour can be broken down into three clear trends. Bold blocking is the first one. This involves bold colours that remind us of the comforts of previous decades. Contrasting tones that take us back to the 80s and 90s. These hues tend to be burnt oranges, browns and moss greens from the 70s, along with the return of the deep-toned Klein blue. At the Heim Textile preview, the colours were more futuristic, with ultraviolets and unnatural neon greens. And at Super Salon, there was also a darker, moodier blue, used in stark contrasting pat palettes. In, Decorex, in a Decorex panel discussion, Louise Wicksteed of Sims Hilditch talked about how now as an exciting and diverse time for design. There are no rules, she said. Clients want to be more bold. The trend forecasters at the Home Textile preview spoke somewhat paradoxically of powerful pastels, such as pistachio, peach and dusty sky blue, something also seen at Salon and Maison et Objet. In Paris, pale pinks and mauves were a strong presence. Finally, there were the earth tones from the khakis and browns that were highlighted at the Heim Textile tra Trend Preview to what House France editor Claire Tardy called an autumn bou bouquet of terracotta, burnt oranges and bold yellows, as well as moss green. The Heim Textile Preview emphasised khakis and organic neutrals seen in dye-free fabrics. And there were colours in bathrooms too. We've been seeing a trend towards colour in the bathroom for years now, but this year it was on hyperdrive. At both Cerce and the London Design Festival, bathrooms were transformed into colourful spaces, with even wash basins forego foregoing white for more interesting tones. At London Design Festival, the emphasis was on warm tones, while at Cerce, many of this year's broader colour trends were reflected in tiles and fixtures. And that's all for today's session. I hope you found it useful. We've linked all the relevant articles in the description of this video. If you have any questions, contact us via support on the House Pro page. Thanks and see you soon on House Pro.